Welcome back off stage radio. I'm your host, Chris Schnabel. And today we have a Gonzaga player herself. Sarah Penner is joining us. Sarah, how are you doing today? Good, good. Well, thank you for joining us. You know, we get a lot of uh, different sports, uh, sports people on. We've had football, we've had baseball, and basketball. It's like, but let's get to sports that aren't really as talked about. So when you said you can come on, I was very excited. I was like, this is what I want. I want I, everybody knows about the other sports. We don't need them. We don't need to talk about basketball here on campus, especially right now. It's a sad day for basketball. Like, let's talk about these other sports. So thank you for coming on and deciding to talk a little volleyball with us. Yeah, I love to represent. So, well, first of all, congratulations on your uh, second team all WCC. I saw that you, you you made that. That's a, that's a good honor to have. Um, I actually know your play from. I work for the video department here. Mm -hmm. And I felt like in the last couple of weeks, your name was being called constantly because you were just laying it down on the outside. So how did you feel like your play was this year? And, and uh, how do you feel like you did this year? I think the end of my season was actually a lot better than it had been in recent years. For me as a player, I know myself and I know I tend to make a lot of errors. So um, I obviously look at numbers and as a player, like, you, you always focus on that. So my numbers these past couple months have been pretty good uh, in comparison to the recent seasons. so. How often do you like to like, are you one of those people that just like, will talk volleyball 24 seven or are you more like, I'll talk about it when I can, but like I like to do other, more of other stuff outside of it? It depends. I think with my teammates, we definitely talk volleyball a lot, but I try not to. It's not something I love to talk about, especially if it's my own play. So. Uh, tell us about some of your best times with the team at GU, because I know this is your senior year, correct? Yep. So tell us, take us through some of the best times you've had here in your four years. Mm, I think, and I think my teammates in my class would agree with it, but the best times we had are honestly in summer school. They always make the class coming in take a couple classes over like July to kind of get used to college. So we came early and I met most of the girls in camp my high school years. So I had already known them and we came in um, to summer school, like living together in Tui. And like it was only athletes in summer school and a couple of like extra kids. So it was really close. We got to meet them and get to know them before school even started. So isn't it funny? I good feel times. Like I feel like that's how it always works with athletes, especially division one. They're like, yeah, I already knew half my team before I got here. Cause we played in this together and we did this and we did travel ball and this, it's kind of funny how that always works. No matter what level I said, D one, it doesn't really matter the level. I feel like you already know most of your teammates before you even step on a court with them. And you know, most of the opposing teammates as well before you step on a court with them. Oh yeah. There's some girls that I play against. I follow on Instagram and then some girls that I watch at like, other schools and big conferences that I follow on Instagram that I don't really know, but like I kind of met them once at a camp or like played against them in clubs. So it's kind of funny. So what, what would you consider the team culture to be like? Like, did you enjoy the team culture there? Was it a really strong team culture? It seems like you guys really liked each other and spent a lot of time with each other. I think the reason I chose Gonzaga was um, because of when I came to camp my sophomore year, I had gone to a couple camps and Gonzaga really stood out because you know, they did kind of focus more on like the fun part of it, but I loved all the people I met, especially the staff members uh, and the girls. And it was just kind of like a really welcoming environment. And the, um, I met actually Travis Knight. He was our strength coach uh, when I was a freshman and sophomore. And then the academic advisors, just meeting with them too, like they really advocated that they cared for the student athlete as an individual instead of as a player. So that really stuck out to me. And uh, I want to go over to a little bit of like COVID stuff. So I believe most players get an extra year. Would you consider taking that extra year eligibility to come back and further your education while having another year with the team? No, I, <laughs> it's funny because I actually had other plans. I, I knew I wanted to play beach volleyball for my fifth year um, after my sophomore year. So I've been working on that. So instead I, I am taking a fifth year just in a different sport. Uh, so you're doing beach volleyball, but like, is that here at Gonzaga? Do they have beach volleyball here? No, no. So I was originally looking to go play somewhere in California and this was kind of when COVID hit. So um, it was that spring when 
all those players since beaches in the spring all those players got an extra year so it was a little tough like recruiting because a lot of coaches weren't sure what their roster was going to look like for the next year I actually ended up um, choosing University of Hawaii because they had an open spot and I was like I'll take it yeah go to Hawaii for oh, yeah. education play a little bit you know that's a place i've always wanted to be so i'm originally from new york and this mm-hmm. is actually being in spokane is the furthest west i've ever been in my entire life i've never yeah. been but hawaii is somewhere i've always wanted to go because you know you mm-hmm. see it on tv or in movies you're like wow that place looks really nice <laughs> One i've night. actually i've actually never been there either and it's funny because everyone's like you're gonna love it and i'm like i know that but like for me i was like "Ooh, like the volleyball program there that's what i want and then everyone's like you're gonna go snorkeling and i'm like okay but i'm gonna play volleyball too (laughs) well it's funny you're like beach volleyball hawaii beaches i mean they do go hand in hand so i could definitely Mm -hmm. see that so with with uh covid protocols and stuff like that how how did things change like practice wise and, and game wise and even routine wise for you uh, I mean, it was tough in the summer when we do preseason, it, we can't have the coaches um, really be too involved because it's kind of a dead period. But then in the fall, when we had that um, time off, it was hard because we couldn't scrimmage ever. It was a lot of individual stuff, which is, you know, nice to work on. But when you're heading into like your season, we had never had that where we have a full semester before we play. So usually when we have our off season, it's the spring. So we know we're working on individual stuff and like that's the time to work out those things you wanna get better at. But having that in the fall was just kind of frustrating because we couldn't really scrimmage or like work on those connections. So it was tough. And did you guys have to deal with a lot of COVID as a team or like versing other teams? I know there was one stint where you guys had some games canceled. Yeah, I think it wasn't too bad in the fall. I don't really remember if we ever got shut down too much, but at the same time, we also kind of like mellowed out as like an athletic department. So we didn't really hang around the other athletes as much as we usually would, or even see them. Um, And then, yeah, we did, we did have to quarantine a little bit. And I think it was February. It was our first, our first two matches. Um, But that was like the only time it had really affected us. Have you been lucky enough to uh, to avoid the virus yourself? Yeah, that's yeah, good. Actually, mm-hmm. that's really good. It's it's funny because like I've I haven't gotten like you know really sick or anything like that, and mm-hmm. I'm like I wonder if I ever had it and just didn't have symptoms. Like I really do, yeah. but who knows? But you know that's that's all the cookie cutter stuff I have. That's all the you know the 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 volleyball. Yeah. sports question stuff so let's go a little bit more into it so you have instagram artwork at spaceworks underscore right how did you even get into how did you even get into drawing and art uh i think i always liked art like growing up i can't remember too well but i know i have a lot of drawings from when i was really little that i like dated and then when i got into high school that's when like we could pick our own electives and then Uh, we had a bunch of art classes and I was like this is so cool like I didn't know we could take like drawing and painting so I basically took like every like art class like that Um, and then I love my teacher too she was really cool she taught me a lot and I actually got a lot better from her actually teaching um, skills and I ended up taking AP art my junior and senior year like building that portfolio and I just kind of yeah got obsessed with it so so you came to school for business. Do you ever think of going to school for art or some sort of art program? Yeah, I kind of realized that like after my freshman year, because I when I originally picked Gonzaga, I loved the school and I was a sophomore. So I didn't even think about doing art. You know, it wasn't really talked about profession. And I also wasn't aware of like the careers in it that were available. So I was like, oh, like business, you know, it's a great school. It's a great degree. And then after my freshman year here, I was kind of like, wow, like I, I want to do some art, but we didn't have a lot of options here within that. So I don't know. I kind of, I found some stuff, but it, um, I did think about, you know, trying to change my major a couple of times. Well, you know, a good thing about art is you don't even need a degree in it. You know, you have your Instagram page, you share it enough. You don't even need to go to school for it. (laughs) Most of the most famous artists didn't even go to school. They just painted their whole lives and then they get one really lucky break and then boom, you're a famous artist. So 
Um, I do like a lot of your art. Uh, there were two pieces that I really liked. There's one of Tyler and one of Frank. Are you a big on really? future fan or are you big fans of those guys? Um, so I have an older brother and he actually, I think he was a big fan of on future um, when he was growing up in middle school and probably Frank Ocean. I don't know how much he listened to him. But then Frank, I got into Frank like, Ocean was in Odd Future. Yeah, I don't yeah. see like he he listened to Odd Future, but I never really heard him talk about Frank Ocean like by himself. Mm -hmm. So I I know I bet he likes him because I don't think people would dislike him. No, nobody dislikes him. It's like know, it's kind of like with guys, it's like they don't want to admit they like Taylor Swift, but we all do like Taylor Swift. It's yeah. it's a fact. We do. We we like all music, but sometimes you gotta be like a man and say, No, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. But they'll sing, trust me, play play something, they'll sing along to it. You'll see. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I kinda got into him like a little later in high school when he came out with it. It's like I think it was his Flower Boy album. Kind of like later when everyone started to sort of like listen to him, but yeah. Yeah, I I really like the I'm I'm a big fan of Tyler. Um, so I'm probably I'm definitely older. I don't know. I say probably I'm in 27. So I grew mm -hmm. up with Odd Future and Tyler the Creator, and I've been listening to him since his first album came out. And then to see the progression of it, I think you did his when you the art that you have at least on the thing is his newest album, right? Yeah, yeah, I did Igor. I loved his outfits, and I like love music videos. So yeah, I just like kept going back to that one. Well, that see, like Flower Boy, and those are two albums that are really good to take uh, to take inspiration from because there's just so much to go from it. There's so much color. There's so much different things you could take from it. So I could see what I got. But I saw those two. I was like, oh, she must like God Future because you got Tyler and you got Frank. You got some other people on there too. But having two from the same thing, it's like maybe she at least listens to it a little bit. So yeah. I was like, yeah, maybe she likes Odd Future, which is respect. I like Odd Future too. Um, so how do you do your art? Do you paint or do you do it digitally or kind of a little bit of both? So I actually, my favorite thing to do was paint in high school. And I did that a lot. I also use like markers, which are like, they're a little fancier than normal markers. Um, so they don't like blend like the Crayola ones do. But um, now I do mostly digital because going to college, like I couldn't bring my stuff with me. And I don't have a lot of time to paint. Like I haven't painted in so long. It's it's really difficult to get back to. So I have an iPad and the app is Procreate, which I think most people use, but I have like a stylus like Apple Pencil that's compatible with it. And that's pretty much what I do most of my artwork on now. And you were from Oregon, correct? Did I get that mm -hmm. right? Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I did my research. So some of the stuff you have, I was looking at it, I was, could definitely tell it's digital, but I did see one, I believe you did it in paint. It was like a, a landscape, mm -hmm. mountains and stuff. Do you, do you enjoy doing more stuff on paper or do you like just whatever you got, you got? Um, it depends. It kind of depends on how much time I have. See, a lot of times like just setting up paint is like, seems like more of a task than actually like painting itself. So um, I've kind of gotten used to the iPad where I can just undo like really easily and like go over things. So it makes it super easy, but I like both. I like being able to like actually physically draw and, um, you know, color on paper. Cause that's like the OG sort of like, you know, working on skills and stuff. What's, what's Bob Ross say? Just a happy mistake. Just happy oh, mistakes. Yep. That's all you're making. You're not, you're not making, yeah. you're making little happy, happy mistakes. That's all it is. Yep. We've had um other artists on here before. We've had one extremely big artist. She was a, an mm -hmm. animator. And then we had another one who uh, was kind enough to, I don't even know if this is in the background here. That's, yeah. that, that's where this came from. Uh -huh. um, there's actually, a fi this is the unfinished one. The finished one is in our big room. So everybody could see, it, you know, nice. Um. so with, all this art and stuff like that. Have you ever thought about going into like, I did see you have another one where you kind of animate the flames. Are you, is that something you like look into doing kind of like making either motion pictures or animation or anything like that? I am interested in like all of that. And it's very hard to learn. And a lot of times I like think, think I'll get into it. And then I realize it takes a lot more time. So I kind of just start a lot of projects and, you know, don't really finish them. But I actually am more into video, so. Um, Me too. I started, yeah, I started doing that. I kind of got working with like the video department and Mark um, and that stuff. And so I kind of got into that because there's more jobs within like media. Mm -hmm. 
and that kind of stuff available. So kind of keeping my options open that way. What kind of stuff are you looking to do in, in that? Like, are you looking to be creative and just like kind of like movies, documentaries, something like that, or just like social media type stuff or broadcast? Um, I actually was, uh, I think my original idea was like film. I really liked music videos. I was like, that would be so cool if I could do that. Mm -hmm. And then um, interested in film. I did the visual literacy minor here. And then I um, started working with Mark my after my sophomore year, my coach got me in with him. So I started doing sports and I was like, wow, like I'm actually pretty good at this. And this is like, like the best thing ever. So I'm also interested in that too. Yeah, I music videos are so much fun to do. Sports are a lot of fun. I love being mm -hmm. on camera for sports because when you get a really good shot, you just like feel like the greatest person in the world. Like, yep, yeah, I shot that. That was me, even though no one other than the director and will know it was you. Like you still, mm -hmm. yeah, that was me. I did that. Um, music videos are so much fun. Have you ever had the opportunity to work on like a music video or anything like that? No. Nope. No, nothing, huh? Do you have mm -hmm. any friends that are uh, musicians? No, I don't think so. Really? I mm -hmm. feel like you'd at least know one musician. You went to high school. You have to know a rapper. I know. You'd think. Actually, my brother my brother does that. He takes photos of rappers. So he's always telling me about his friends. And I'm like, I have no idea who your friends are. <laughs> That's how you got to get your start. It's just find somebody yeah. that does music and, and go and do it. I had the opportunity yeah. to do a music video. It was so much fun. Except for really? the part where two people in my crew didn't show up that day. So I had to yeah, do everything. But that's part of doing video yeah. is 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 dealing with the problems that are about to occur so but sports video is so much fun are you looking to do like sports video with something like for uh for volleyball or just any sport would be fine like would you just go do nascar if they told you you could i mean i'm interested yeah in doing all sports um i really want to do football i haven't had the chance to do that yet obviously because we don't have a football team yeah um i don't get to film volleyball because I usually am playing it here I get to edit it I think my favorite part is just like um because I know sports really well then it makes it easier so I know like you know the parts that are coming up and what to film and then I just like especially my friends here I love making them look good so I think it's really fun so you're into you like the editing part of it oh yeah I, can I, see I do I do like filming I just don't like broadcast as much because um I don't like the live sports I like to be able to edit Mm -hmm. you know and kind of like have a plan in my head and execute it you're creative you're mm -hmm. a creative person you're doing art you're doing video you're doing all this stuff I'm, I'm surprised you don't have a guitar in the background anything creative it seems like you're super into I did I did pick up guitar for like a year in middle school and then I that didn't stick what song did you try to learn I think I tried to learn Taylor Swift I remember oh. bringing those songs to my guitar teacher every week I feel like those would be a little bit easier because it's more pop. Pop's usually like four to five mm -hmm. notes. Something yeah, it was like, like three or four chords. Yeah, that's it. I uh, I could never do guitar. I have too big of too big of hands, too big of fingers. And then I picked up. I'm looking to see if it's. Around. I thought it was around here, but I guess I threw it somewhere else. I picked up a ukulele. Something you might want to pick oh. up if you're going to Hawaii. I bet you that'd be a yeah. good one to have for the beach. Um, so much easier. Four chord or four uh, strings all the songs are like four notes or four chord. it's great yeah consider nice. that if you want to try to get into something else creative but like i could tell you just you want to do the video editing someone that's very creative that's what they want to do is the video editing i love video editing mm -hmm. it's my favorite thing to do you're drawing yeah. like i could see the creativeness just by the things you're doing outside of it so what would be your absolute dream job or I'll put it a little better if you had if you could do a hobby and get paid for it, what would it be for the rest of your life? Ooh. I think like one of my dream jobs would be to like make music videos. And I think like it would be super cool to work with artists and like the concepts they want for their videos based on their music. Cause I think that's so cool. Like creating a story um, from music. And then I can also see myself like getting into like filmmaking. I'm not super like into dialogue. So the whole like, um script writing isn't my thing but I love the visuals so and like uh music scoring and that kind of stuff like I'm into that and what are you looking to do when you graduate from Gonzaga in a very short amount of time now we know you're going you want to go off and play beach volleyball but what is like 
what is what is next after you get your degrees and you're all done with school that that's a good question i think don't you love that the, question yeah <laughs> and for me it's hard because i have like three or four different things that i could see myself pursuing i just don't know which one i really want to focus on but um depending on how next year goes i really do love beach volleyball and so because like there are opportunities to play pro in america i'm thinking of um, pursuing that so we'll we'll see how far i go in beach what's um what are the other pro, pro leagues i know there's like olympics and stuff like that but what mm -hmm. is what is else other than olympic play is there for uh beach volleyball yeah so we have the avp which is like um there's a tour in the u.s and anyone can like enter those type of tournaments but then like you have to get qualified to play in like the top the top division and then um based off of that too there's also like fivb which is the international tournaments and then if you qualify to go to those uh, you can get so many points or like stars and then that's how you kind of qualify for the olympics mm -hmm. so you just kind of have to work your way up pretty much are I, I blanking on the names are the two um extremely extremely talented women that won like how what was it like six or seven gold medals mm -hmm. are they still are they still at it I so Carrie, Carrie Walsh, she's playing with Brooke Sweat, and they, I'm not sure if they qualified yet, but um, April Ross and her partner, um, Alex Kleinman, they just qualified for Tokyo, and they're probably like the best pair out there right now. The, what aren't there, aren't there two that have been like around for 10, 15 years, and they go to Olympics every year, and they win gold every year, or am I thinking um, the wrong thing? Well, Misty May and Carrie Walsh, I think, were that pair for a while. And then Misty May retired a couple years ago, um, gotcha. maybe like two, two or three Olympics ago. Yeah. Gotcha. I was, I knew they I knew they existed. And then it was and then it was Carrie Walsh and April Ross, and I think they won a couple medals. Okay. Okay. I yeah. knew that. I knew that there was a very good duo, and the names just were not there. Um, mm -hmm. I remember we were researching them earlier this year when we were looking for guests and stuff like that, and one of them don't know which one probably wouldn't want to say which one anyway was in a heap from fans because she was completely anti covid mm -hmm. and she was just getting absolutely destroyed on that this was like the day we decided like hey let's see what she's up to let's see if she could do yeah. this so we look her up and that day we're like she's not going to join us <laughs> she's not going to come on she doesn't want to talk to us yeah. uh, who would want to do that during this so if you're looking uh if people are looking for your art it's at spaceworks underscore on Instagram. Is it anywhere else? Um, I mean, I have a Vimeo, but it was more for like school projects. So what I have of, some. What kind of stuff do you have on your Vimeo? I must have completely missed that. Oh, no, I did. Yeah, I, I missed it. I missed it. I'll admit it. Um, it was most of my like projects for my film classes. I took documentary filmmaking and then creative filmmaking. So my teacher was advocating he's like the real professionals they use vimeo they don't use youtube so i was like okay no, it's true the worst part about vimeo is like you get like 500 megabytes and then you have to buy the I, package i know i'm Just like i don't it. upload that frequently so like i can't i don't want to pay for that no but I then was, it doesn't let me upload a video longer than like six or seven minutes yep i was, I was right there i was right there with it um this this whole this whole show came from a documentary series i used to do when i graduated um, I made, I started making a series about musicians because I wanted to just continue doing video work and continue stuff like that. So I was like, Vimeo, that's the way to go because that's how everybody mm -hmm. does it. And then I went to upload the first episode of the series and I couldn't do it because it was like 26 minutes and it's like, you get 500 free or you could buy our, our beginners package at $500. And I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> I'm not right? making any money yeah. off this. I just graduated. So I decided just to go the YouTube and Facebook route for it because I just never, we had them so split apart. Like you, like you said, it's like, I don't use this enough to really do it. But what yeah. I actually, what I started doing is we started, we did it on YouTube and Facebook. And then we just said, you know what? Screw Vimeo. We're just going to do our own website. So we just made a website for it and drew people to the website instead and that worked pretty well. And then here we are. Yeah. <laughs> seven awesome. years later, whatever it is. So
definitely do that. Keep up, um, keep, keep just find your own projects and shoot them up because that's the way to keep your, your skills, your skills mm -hmm. there for what you're doing. But thank you for joining us. I really, uh, really enjoy talking to you and I'm, you know, I could talk video all day, just like you could probably talk volleyball and art. I could talk video all day, but I won't do yeah. that because, you know, people listening might, might fall asleep if I start talking video because <laughs> they don't want to hear about it. But thank you for joining us. We appreciate you joining us. Yeah, thank you. You can find Sarah's art at Spaceworks underscore. If you want to check out her art, you can go and check out her volleyball career. It's right there on the uh, GoZag website. You can find us on Instagram at off.stage.radio or at Offstage Radio on Twitter. You can also find us at Chris Schnabel Productions. That's, uh, sorry, at Schnabel Productions. That's S-C-H-N-A-B-E-L productions.com slash Offstage Radio. We will see you next week. Thank you for stopping by. See you later.